something that existed before I did seemed to fascinate me for some reason um, and it's, it still does I mean I've I've now kind of compartmentalized my interests you know I don't, I, I don't sort of collect everything and anything now but um, really I don't know I, I see something from the 20s 30s or 40s and it just somehow speaks to me and I just I feel drawn to those kinds of things often they're they're designed better, they look better, they were designed to last, and often they do, and I try and collect things that, s that still have a function. Um, it's all very well looking good, but you know a lot of the furniture that I have is still usable, and the radios, I restore them and they work. The typewriter still works. So um, I guess I just like having these kinds of things around me because I'm fascinated with, with that kind of period of time. For me, with radios, apart from looking beautiful and they're beautifully designed, and a lot of them still work, the thing that makes them remarkable for me is that they've, they've physically had that period of time living through them, because it would have been the centrepiece in the family home, and certainly throughout the war, that was how people got their news, and they knew about how things were happening on the other side of the world. It was a, you know, they, they could plug into this new technology and all of a sudden things happening on the other side of the world were coming in their living room. And so to see an object today that still works, where that still happens, for me is quite remarkable. Similarly, when someone has a classic car that's done thousands and thousands of miles and you read the logbook and you read the journeys they've taken, the trips they've taken, it, it kind of lives within that object, within that vehicle. And when you drive that vehicle, you're breathing new life into it and you're living the next chapter in its existence. So I guess the radios, for me, that's, that's why they're, they're, they're pretty spectacular to me. I guess a time that fascinates me is the, the immediate pre-war years where people had really no idea what the next decade was, was, was going to be like and um, the sort of years 37, 38, 39 um, were, I think we still look on them as being quite glamorous, very stylish um, and then of course war came and everything stopped, everything was, was put on hold and then you had this very interesting time where stylistically and culturally things were very very pedestrian and then after the war we kind of had to pick things back up so you have this sh sort of shift, slight shift but the 40s really did take a while to get going culturally and stylistically so for me I'd say it was 37, 38, 39 Definitely, and that's that's evident in the way things, the way things look, and, and the music that, that you can still hear now, and I think that had a massive influence on things we see now. You, you see packaging, furniture, even record sleeves. Their roots are very much in that time, because for me, in twenties and thirties, when you look at photography, what people like Man Ray were doing, and um, you know, clothes designers, car manufacturers, um, and filmmaking especially. Um, there's a there's a huge, huge amounts of genres that were that were thriving back then. And you know, you go to the BFI today, and their program still includes things from the 20s and 30s. You know, these gems, these long lost silent movies, um, photography exhibitions are still people still flocking to see how things were done back then and I think that's a real testament to 
to the, 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 the sort of artists that were shaping the world back then. It all kind of came together really. Uh, um, where I work now, the place is the, the place was set in that, that time and um, when you when you walk around the site you're immediately caught up in that era. It's a, a you know a wonderful place to, to walk around and, and when visitors come in they see some of the buildings and the objects from that time and they really start to, to understand and start to they take something away with them. Um, how I got there was, yeah, I mean, ve I very much um, support exhibitions and the, sort of the, the heritage sector, sector anyway. So um, when this position came up a few years ago, I, I just jumped at the chance. So it, now it's the perfect marriage of, of my interests and passions, and luckily I get to do that in my day-to-day my day -day job, which is very lucky.